Hey Thumpers, welcome to another episode of Hyper Heroes here live on Hyper RPG. Woo! Very excited to be and, here tonight. And not live on YouTube. And not live on YouTube. Thank you guys for <laughs> no. watching though. Um, I, let me apologize in advance. Yep. I've been breathing a lot of smoke. Yep. LA is completely on fire. Yes, it, it is. is. And my throat is effed up. Yeah, man. Yeah. Effed up the A. Yeah, definitely. Uh, oh, so you're drinking a tiny whiny over there. Tiny whiny. Tiny whiny. That's what Lucas. Sparkling wine. wine. That's what yeah. Lucas calls them, yeah. and I have to give him props. That's a, an adorable name <laughs> for those little, little can <coughs> alcohols. They're yeah, if delicious. you're unaware, uh, we've been having fires here for the last two days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, very close yeah. to the studio. Very close in West Hollywood. There's a few other fires popping up all around L.A., Ventura County, San Diego. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. been really, really it's crazy. The Santa Ana season. Santa Ana season. Yeah, in freaking December of oh, all time. Man. It's crazy. Uh, it's been nuts. Uh, we've kind of been out of the house day. for the last two days. I, I've been staying here with with Alex, but Malik and Zach were gone. Mm -hmm. We weren't streaming in the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. Somebody um, was actually really nice to Lucas. They yeah. left the valley and they gave them a free Airbnb yeah. in this beautiful place downtown L.A. Uh, for him and anybody who needed help. Yeah. So wow. mad props to yeah. those people. And really, really and cool. And also really a, real, a real heartfelt like thank you and holy shit to all of the men and women that are in the fire departments around yeah. L.A. Yep, like yep, yep. Totally. that is such a crazy job and I can ima not imagine what they're going like through. People yeah. evacuated, yeah. acres lost. I mean, it's been it's been crazy. It's been really, it, really insane. But it's a thing where like the 405 was shut down yeah. Yeah. and I didn't see anybody on the internet going like being like mad at that. Everyone's no. Everyone does rally around yeah. fire season yeah. and being yeah. like, hey, make sure your pets are taken care of. Here's right, where you right. have to go. Here's a mask. It's, Don't be the smoke. Yeah. Like, it's, get away. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, yeah. Been, it's been nuts. It's been nuts. Um, but I want to say thank you to everybody out there who's been watching our Avengers Infinity Yo. War trailer. Yo, whoa, we're, whoa, we're, whoa, I just burped. In the Yo, <laughs> <laughs> five hundred thousand, five hundred K is pretty good. Oh no, we're almost at six hundred. Almost now. at six hundred. Oh my goodness. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's wow. definitely been probably one of the best trailer reactions we've ever done. It is the best trailer. Yeah, reaction and I'm, I'm glad we got to bring in a bunch of people in on that because that that yeah, was really yeah. fun. I also want to say thank you to everybody who's been using the community tab on YouTube. You guys yep. have been crushing yep. it on there. That's really I've been cool. posting like polls and images and, and all kinds of questions for you guys. What's the community tab on YouTube. Oh yeah, you weren't here last week. You no, missed out, Buster. It's it a was a great. It was it's a, a great new feature. Episode, on, it's a it's a new feature on YouTube uh, where you can basically go to different tabs, and we have a community one now, and it's basically like a Facebook feed. Yeah. Oh great. So we I can go oh, in great. there and I can ask questions to the audience. We can do polls. We can post graphics. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. a really good yeah. opportunity for us to really engage and interact with the YouTube community. Yeah, so we can really kind of see what they would like us what, to do, what they're into, and yeah. that's great. And if yeah. you're watching and you haven't played around with that, you I would recommend jump your little you tushy over there because yeah. it because it number one, uh, positivity drowns out negativity, so 100%, that would help. Hundred uh, percent. But number two, like too. it's all po yeah, yeah, it's all positive. It's and, and it's all about good community team building. Which is so great. That's yeah. what I'm all about. I'm super into that. Totally. And it also lets us know and everybody here at Hyper RPG know like what you like. So yeah. that we can do more of that and do more shows like that. Totally. So yeah, I have definitely. a poll yeah. up there right now asking which twenty seventeen superhero movie had the best trailers. Ooh, Go that's a and great. vote. Oh, nice. I also had it up on uh Twitter, but it's got it's you know, there's only twenty four you know hour what? window. Maybe this is a controversial statement, but I'm gonna say not Wonder Woman mm -hmm. only because I remember the trailers for Wonder Woman, and Look. it felt like a completely different thing yeah. when I saw yeah. the film. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The movie moved me and made me cry. Right. Versus, and I loved Logan, but those the trailers like yeah. like blew me away. Oh, absolutely, Got, and because it was to cry so different. After yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. that's an interesting like. Okay, right now, as far great. as I remember, the movies that are in the top lead is Logan number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, I believe, is Thor Ragnarok. Had some great trailers. And then yeah. I think yeah. third is Wonder Woman. Yeah. Um, Spider-Man: Homecoming, like nobody really. Sure. Justice League, I nobody that really. Just, that's it, another one. Those it, trailers were. They're like fun and poppy. <laughs> right, right. But it's a thing where you watch the movie, then you yeah. get to. Absolutely. It's, I don't yeah. know. That's interesting. Wonder that's Woman interesting. was great, and it's not to put down the. No, I know. Right. But no, I love Wonder Woman trailers. trailers. That's what Hands I'm saying. Down had the best trailers. Yeah, yeah. So go ahead. Go go to the community tab. Vote if you have yeah. a if you want to pick a movie that's not listed on there. Go ahead and just write a comment. And let us know uh, what you think. I'm super curious to see sort of how it pulls out. Mm -hmm. I may possibly do a video about that too, yeah. about which movie. Not Black Panther, <laughs> guys. 2017 <laughs> superhero movies. movies that movie comes out. Movies that were released year. in the year yeah. 2017. Some, some people did that. They were like, "What about Infinity War? What about Black?" I'm like, 2017, 2017 superhero guys. movies. 
Um, also, before we move on yeah. to the first subject, somebody asked uh, why Zach isn't here. It's because um, we're brown washing Zach now. That's mm-hmm. true. And See how this works, guys? Every single week, we're going yeah. we're gonna, we're gonna to change this. Yeah. Zach found out. Brownie Zach Whiteys. Zach found out that his role was originally played by a person of color. Yeah. And just like the dude from Deadpool, he, he stepped down. He graciously, graciously was like, let's bring down. in Daniel Day Kim. Let's <laughs> let me walk away from the role. Uh, <laughs> so he's the Ed Scrine of this group. Yeah. He's the Ed Scrine. God nice. bless him. Yes. Zach. God bless him. He's Brown the Ed Scrine. Give, giving, a, giving a person of color a chance. Yeah, just like it's grind, absolutely. <laughs> also, thank you guys so much for subscribing to all the podcasts. We're up on Google Play, SoundCloud, iTunes. I submitted us to Spotify. Nice. Hopefully that goes through soon. We, mm-hmm. we should nice. be on all the major listening platforms. I know some of you guys, you know, you guys obviously cannot watch live. Mm-hmm. Sometimes yeah. you don't want, yeah. you, you're not able to catch the playback. And I know sometimes you just want to take us on the go, which is totally valid. Yeah, man. Um, so <laughs> we're trying to make that available on any possible platform that we can. Yeah. And uh, we're going to continue pushing out content on YouTube, on uh, Facebook. And I know Zach did an Honesty Hour, I believe, today, talking about some new stuff that's maybe going to happen in the new year. So we yeah, cool. should be fun. should be fun. Yeah. yeah. Let's, so, those, so this has been an interesting week of news. Of, it's actually been pretty heavy. Yeah. yeah. Pretty heavy yeah. on yeah, the news. There's some, been, been some heavy hitters in the news going on this yeah. week. Yeah. And the let's, first thing. Let's get into it. First thing we're going to talk about is going to be something that's going to tear the comments apart. Don't Which is expected. Don't Here's the thing. About the Anytime that's something. why I put a lot of filters in there. Anytime something like this comes up, and that's kind of what the <sighs> expectation is, I always feel like we have a really good measured conversation about it. Yeah, definitely. And we a lot do. of times yeah. we explain certain stuff, because I need some kind of explanation for some of this stuff right. sure. as right. well. Because I looked at some of it, and it felt a little bit like non-news to me, but I don't exactly know what's going on precisely. Right, right, right. And a lot of times when we get news and information like this, we either have to wait until it's officially announced, or yeah. it means that it's even way further along than we think. Right. Exactly. Because exactly. You, we're not going to hear about rumors at this sort of magnitude unless mm-hmm. stuff's already in motion. Yep. I, yeah. agree. I don't know. So I let's agree. let's get into let's it because this is something I want to talk it. about. This is a yeah. Big one. It is a big one. Mm-hmm. It's a big one, and it's regarding the DC film universe. There is a new report that came out uh, from Variety s- explaining more or less that the DC film universe is going to be undergoing a restructuring again. It kind of happened after Batman versus Superman, you know, due to sort of the box office performance. People say that movie's very it successful. Was lackluster. Financially, it's successful for what it for for whatever. I don't want to get into it because people are gonna <laughs> be so upset about it. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but they did a restructuring. They did a restructuring at that point, especially because of how that movie performed and how Suicide Squad performed. And now, because of the box office performance of Justice League, they are restructuring yet again. John Berg is going to be moving out of the comic book film properties sort of producing role, and he's going to be making sort of a lateral shift over to just being a producer at Warner Brothers. So question about that. John Berg, producer. Yes. Was he on this film franchise since Man of Steel? No, he was brought in with Jeff Johns later on. I think it was after it was either after Suicide Squad or after Batman versus Superman okay. to help Jeff Johns sort of oversee the production of these movies. He was there in London overseeing the production of Justice League and I think him and Jeff Johns were sort of put in charge of kind of quote unquote fixing Justice League after Zack Snyder had or DC had left. Films. DC Films. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. yeah, and DC Films is a brand overall. All right. Okay. Yeah, so he's making a lateral shift, and he's going to be more in a producing role. Uh, at Jeff Warner Johns Brothers, at yeah. Warner Brothers, the studio. Yeah. yeah. Jeff Johns is his role is sort of uncertain at this point. He's still going to be the chief creative officer of DC Comics or DC Entertainment, which but covers video games, movies, yes. yeah. TV series, yes. comic books. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So okay. he'll he'll continue being the chief creative officer of that. He'll continue reporting to Diane Nelson like he has been since he's been integrated mm-hmm. into the movie mm-hmm. side. Mm-hmm. But they're saying that his role may be changed into more of an advisory role, mm-hmm. which is what I kind of thought he already was doing. Granted, he yes. does have producer credits on Justice League, right. and I believe he also yeah. has producer credits on Wonder Woman. But look, real quick about the producer credits. I was reminded of this. Right. Stan Lee is an executive producer, producer. in what regard? Stan Lee is an executive <laughs> producer of Netflix's The Punisher. Yeah. I 100,000% promise you he had zero to do shit. with any... But it's a thing where Stan Lee had a deal a all those, all those years back yeah. that he will always receive a producer credit yes. on a Marvel thing, I that, think. That's and also, I'm sure he funds stuff. Like, he's got money flowing everywhere. The dude Probably. has money flowing So right. whenever I... When, it's just... It's so difficult because whenever we talk of, about... He is the Marvel brand. Yeah, he's he the Hugh Hefner of... of right. in this, yes. in, of, if Marvel <laughs> is Playboy, he he's is. a figurehead and he's, you know... Right. But whenever... Like, I'm reminded every time I see a new Marvel thing... 
because Stanley is an executive producer. And I'm like, oh, he's like 94. No, he's not. He wasn't on set that day. He, he's no. not working no, 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 actively no, no, on no. Netflix is the Punisher. Right. He probably came to his office and said, hey, <laughs> this is a rough breakdown of the movie. What do you think? <laughs> Excelsior. And then I mean, that's it. Exactly. If that's that. All but exactly. If that. So, so, so I feel like the producer credit can range from that mm-hmm. to all the way to like almost a second director you're on right. set every day yeah, you're well, on of course, you know so of whenever course. we talk about producer it's like uh, we don't know what that yeah. could be so when you mention that Jeff Johns has had producer credits in other movies in the past but his, he still might be evolving his role into more of an advisory role than he previously had yeah. that's part of that thing of like well we exactly we don't know what he did before yeah. or what he's going to do moving forward it's that's you know it's yeah. frustrating and the thing with Wonder Woman you know he came he came on there and he really did work with Patty Jenkins to rewrite mm-hmm. and work out the script for that movie mm-hmm. so so it's going to be interesting to see sort of what an advisory role means. Does that mean he's sort of reducing his part in sort of the the more or less the production aspect of it, and he's going to go double down and really go hard on the creative elements of that, mm-hmm. helping people, helping directors and writers sort of flush out what their scripts are going to be, uh, flushing out the, the world and the stories and all that kind of stuff, instead of just kind of being like, well, I'm going to be a producer and I'm going to help you with the production side of it and a little bit of the creative side of it. Yeah, I think for a guy like Jeff Johns, it's more important for him to really double down on the creative elements because I feel like he understands understands the world so well. He really does. But he may not necessarily be somebody who really understands the producing part of it. I think in terms of what he's done on the DC TV side, mm-hmm. a lot of it has mostly been creative and not necessarily production driven. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if yeah, that's what his role... in episodes right. for various shows. Yeah, yeah. and I think yeah, if yeah. that's what his role is going to be going forward, it's going to be more of... A, putting his creative hand on things and seeing like, well, this works, that doesn't, and not and less of a mechanical from a mechanical side of things. I, and I think it's I a hope good so. role for him. I really hope they so. Have yeah, nothing to lose. Yeah, yeah. nothing to lose at yeah. this point. Yeah. yeah, which is a good spot to be in actually because that's when you take risks. That's yeah. when you make moves. Yeah, that's when shit shuffles around, and that's what's happening right now. I had a pitch because I was thinking about this today, in the same way that Marvel Studios, owned by Disney, has their Marvel Studios brand under one little thing, and even though they report and direct to Disney. They have Kevin Feige. I was Mm -hmm. thinking, who could this person be? And for years, everyone said Jeff Johns. And I had a pitch today. What if it's Patty Jenkins? What would you think of Patty Jenkins, the director of Wonder Woman, to be the person who is in charge of overseeing the sort of creative thrust of not just Wonder Woman, but the broader DC universe? And thinking about that made me really excited because Mm -hmm. it's clear that Patty Jenkins loves Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. But I also think that when you watch that film, it's clear that she... Uh, is a lover of good stories and good yes. characters, yes. which to me are the backbone of what makes great mm-hmm. superhero stories. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's not so much uh, for me great superhero stories, and they can be this, but they're not the sort of the 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 kind of like mind expanding, thought provoking, right, 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 political, right. you know, reflections of our times per se, but for me, the stuff that I love is great characters. I love Superman because yep. I love Superman. Yep. I love Batman because I love Batman. I love Wonder Woman because I love Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. Not specific stories that I can go back to and be like, well, this story was great. In the same way right. that I love Watchmen, the story, but I'm not crazy about Rorschach from Watchmen <laughs> or Ozymandias from Watchmen. <laughs> yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, That's exactly. the difference between They like work as I- a unit, not individually. Exactly. Really. Between yeah. between like iconic characters that have been around for decades versus like the sort of like strong stories. Anyway, I was just thinking... Patty Jenkins, I would love for her to be the person that, hey, we're going to put this in front of your desk. Yeah. Um, this new Superman, Man of, Two, Man, yeah. Man of Steel 2 script, what do you think? Yeah. This new Batman, uh, uh, solo Matt film. Reeves, solo film, mm-hmm. what do you think? Mm-hmm. The Nightwing Endeavor, what do you think? Batgirl. Batman Beyond, Batgirl. what do you think? Yeah, and, and, or just as some, you know, pitching her if she's not already f- familiar with all yeah. of the different characters that exist and be like, Patty, what do you think? What are we, what are we missing? What should we do? What do we need? What? I would love for her to do that. I, I, would love I think it would be amazing. <clears throat> as well, if she wants to do that, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't shoehorn some, because yeah. uh, on paper, yeah, she fits. But if she doesn't have that drive, then I know, I was just thinking the same way that Kathleen Kennedy is over at Lucasfilm. Sure. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I'm yeah. like, ah, man, Patty no, Jenkins, I, I think. I, I but agree. I think, yeah. I think 100%. I, I'd love to see her. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was going to say, I think the biggest difference between the two is that Kathleen Kennedy is a producer. Yes. That's, yeah. and I mean, so, yeah, and that's not thing. that Patty and I Jenkins. I want a director to be a producer. Not that Patty yeah. Jenkins is not. Correct. Because Monster, she Correct. was a producer, a writer, a director on that movie. I'm sure to a certain extent she was a producer of some sorts in term, when it comes to Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. But I think what DC needs is a very established, knowledgeable, experienced producer mm-hmm. who can work with Jeff Johns. Mm -hmm. who understands not only the business side of making movies, but also understands the comic book world. Yeah. And I don't... And I think that 
while Jeff Johns understands the comic book world, I think he understands the business, the production side of it, to an extent. <coughs> mm-hmm. um, right, right. Zach Stentz put out a tweet today that I thought was interesting, and he said, if Warner Brothers was smart, they would rehire Drew Cravello to write the DCEU ship. He was the Fox exec who shepherded X-Men First Class and put together the Deadpool team. He is brilliant, creative, and knows DC backwards and forward. Wow. So rehire was he on there? Was he working there before? I think he had been there at some. He must have been there at some point mm. before. Um, Drew was the one who called me into his office, showed me a trailer for a DC online game directed by Tim Miller, and said, "This guy is the next great superhero director. I'm going to hire him. Uh, you need to wow. get. You need. You do need that sort of an eye, that sort of vision and perspective to really understand for talent. For talent, yeah, how right, to right, right. really look ahead and think big picture. Um, I think Patty Jenkins is great. I would rather she spent her time worrying about." Wonder Woman. Sure. And if they want her to kind of be some sort of advisory role like Jeff Johns Mm -hmm. to kind of look at scripts and sort of look at them and be like, this is past work. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. But I think in terms of shaping the universe, it needs somebody who really understands the deep, deep, deep comic book lore like a Jeff Johns. Mm -hmm. And then somebody who is deep into the producing aspect of it and figuring out Logistically, how do we make this work? How do we make this work? And then for them to be able to focus, again, just on this particular franchise. Because it seems so ambitious. This franchise seems so ambitious in the same way that Marvel Studios is now two, now three movies a year. The Mm -hmm. same way that Pixar is a movie a year, sometimes two. Mm -hmm. Like, that's its own studio. And I understand that uh, Disney owns Marvel, but they are able to like focus with sure. a whole group of a yeah. team to be like, you guys are doing just this. Yeah. In the same way they have Star Wars as a team, mm-hmm. um, that I feel like for forever, DC Comics and the DC Universe has always deserved that same sort of focus. Not Absolutely. just Warner Brothers making the movies the way that they made Harry Potter, right. one every couple of years, because right. it seems like they don't want to do it this way, that they mm-hmm. want to do the... We're a shared universe, and we are big budget movies, and we're events, and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I feel like to do that, you got to do that. Remind me about this because I was thinking about this today. Mm-hmm. James Gunn oversaw, helped with some of the Guardians of the Galaxy stuff in Avengers: Infinity War. Yes. Did Patty Jenkins do the same thing for Wonder Woman in Justice League? Has that was in that ever covered? League? I, I don't remember if she I ever was. No like, I think yeah. there was. Yeah. Men- I think there was some mention of it, but I think because it was Zach and he had already introduced her in BVS, mm-hmm. I think it was minimal. I think mm-hmm. mostly what they collaborated on was sort of like. The trajectory of the character and where she would end up in Wonder Woman, mm-hmm. which would then influence sort of where they pick up with her in Justice League. Okay. okay. But in terms of probably like just solely driving the tone of the character and mm-hmm. driving the direction where the character goes, I don't think so. I think, and it's not, I think they had already kind of worked that out sure. beforehand. Sure. And I'm not saying that uh, Wonder Woman in Justice League was lacking, it, it, far from it. I thought she right. was really great, but I'm just right. saying to still hear some of that like right. synergistic, like, oh, we had Patty looking at some stuff yeah. on Justice yeah. League, just, just like we know, had James Wan. Yeah. James Wan came over and checked out some Aquaman stuff mm-hmm. and maybe gave some <laughs> notes and blah, 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 yeah. uh, to kind of yeah. hear that stuff. Yeah. But, you know, I don't remember. Uh, Heartliner yeah. asked earlier in the chat room, what was the name of the guy? It's uh, Drew Cravello. Uh, yeah, if you guys want to look up and find out where he is right now, he may not be at Fox anymore either. Sure. So if he's kind it, of a free agent right now. I'm sure that the guy is very qualified in the same yeah. way people in the chat were saying, I would love for Warner Brothers, the movie studio, to look at more Warner Brothers animated sure. people and creative That's storytellers. What I'm talking about. To, especially for the people that did DC superhero mm-hmm. stuff. Um and the tr- that's what the, that's what the trick is. The trick is finding the right people. Right. And I do believe that the right people are out there, especially totally. for comic book worlds. I think that what's even a more challenge is like trying to find the right people to do video game stuff in this yeah. day and age. Because yeah. I'm like, maybe a generation hasn't happened yeah. where video game people c- that have grown up on the stuff mm-hmm. are readily available. There's not that many Duncan Joneses that yeah. grew up playing right. Warcraft to then yeah, direct yeah, yeah. the War- World yeah. of Warcraft movie, right? That's kind of, right. or swap that. Uh, they grew up playing World of Warcraft to direct Warcraft. Warcraft. But yeah. that's the thing. It's like we need more, we need to, you need to find those right people, those men and women that, that know the thing and right. love the thing. Yeah. I mean, they're they're overlooking a huge talent pool by not pulling from the people who worked on Justice League, the yeah. animated series, mm-hmm. and Unlimited and all that stuff. It's yeah. just, it sucks because animation guys like Gendy can mm-hmm. come out and do some amazing shit. Like, mm-hmm. Gendy has, has come out with some of the best Star Wars material that I've ever seen, and now Samurai Jack. The way mm-hmm. he's, he's sort of having this arc with this character and then letting him return to it, it's just yeah. incredible. But... Mm-hmm. Uh, for some reason, they've overlooked. Like we've, we've you could have another Brad Bird on your hands here, guys. Exactly. I, know, I was right? about to say. Yeah. I was about to say yeah. Brad Bird. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think the one thing that Star Wars and Lucasfilm adapted really well from the Marvel model was that they have a writers' room. Mm-hmm. They have a team. They they're called the Story Group. It's Pablo Hidalgo, Kiri Hart, Kathleen Kennedy, and a few other people. They are solely in charge of maintaining the continuity of the Star Wars universe. <laughs> mm-hmm. And of course, because of the because of how the movies sort of go. F- 
the timelines are sort of all over the place and stuff with the comics and the video games and the television series and the movies to at least have those five to six people who can really focus and say, okay, Ryan Johnson is telling this story. Yeah. How do we sort of craft additional stories around that, yeah. but still keep with the continuity of what we've already established? So I think, you know, Marvel has really done a great job of that, and uh, they've obviously been working on it for years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not something you can perfect overnight, and that's totally fine. Nobody's expecting DC to flip it around, do a 180 overnight. Yeah. Right, right, it's going right. to take time. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens with Aquaman. We'll see what happens with uh, Wonder Woman 2 and Shazam. Yeah. Land Stander says, yeah, that whole story group thing, I think, has been a really good idea. Yes. Well, just it's so funny that you mentioned that because yeah. I've heard conflicting things. Like there's a story group at yeah. Pixar that has been very successful with Pixar films where everybody mm -hmm. kind of chimes in. I feel like it's Disney that knows how to do it well. It's Disney, yeah. but then yeah. even with the Marvel ones specifically, I've heard recently that like it was some of that Marvel story group that made the 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 um that made Kevin Feige want to break off from them yeah. and just report to Disney proper instead yeah. of the sort of Marvel and have his creative own group yeah. story because group. part of that Marvel group maybe had bad notes or they had and somebody I forget where Some I heard it but they were like the they're audience. they're comic book and action figure people not necessarily movie people yeah, yeah. as yeah. I knock over the Hardliner says Drew Cavello is still with Warner Brothers but in a writing and producer role so there you go if he's available and and, and if Zach Stentz vouches for him I mean I trust in Zach Stentz mm -hmm. he's, he's been crushing it on a lot of the stuff that he's been writing for the CW Thor. stuff and yes. X-Men First Class. Yeah. Yes. And a bunch of yeah. and, and CW stuff, you said? Yeah. He's and somebody in the chat earlier episodes, said yeah. was uh, had the question of geek cred because we were talking about Patty Jenkins and they were like, well, how much geek cred does she have? And I went, I'm thinking in my head, dude, she directed Wonder Woman. That's, mm -hmm. geek, that's I, geek cred for life. I'm just, right. you know? There's, there's a certain element of geek cred, but there's also a huge element of learning how to properly tell a story, learning how to be a good director. Like, just, just it, there's so many mo elements to a movie that, yes, you can be a geek. Like, yeah. we could... I'm sure if we all try to write a movie like together, it would be a disaster. <laughs> like we talk about it all the time. Yeah. But I'm sure like putting everything together, like Adam, you tried to make a movie. <clears throat> oh, I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> See, it, but it was tough, right? Oh, yeah. super. It hard. was it yeah, was really really course. difficult. So it's about finding that balance, man. Yeah, it's it, a, it's about it can't really finding that balance. Just be people that are geeky, right? Right. Versus right. just people that are like movie makers and you, don't right. give exactly. a shit about it. Needs to be, it needs to be right an balance. integrated pool of a yeah, lot yeah. of different creative people. Yeah. Uh, Wacky says, isn't the story group gone from Marvel? Kevin Feige, what he does, every time they go and they need to make a new movie, he takes a group of, like a collective group of people. It's probably writers, producers, all kinds of people. Oh, I think now it might be James Gunn, the Rousseau yes, brothers, yes. those people. That's yes. a that's like a different creative group exactly. than the Marvel Entertainment, Live yes. in New York, headed by Ike Perlmutter, mm -hmm. who said no Joe female Quesada. villains because yeah, 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 yeah. they don't sell action figures. That's a different ladies thing. ladies don't sell exactly. action figures. Yeah. But what yeah. he does, he takes them out to, uh, out to uh, what's it called? I'm blanking. But it takes them out for a, to a weekend retreat, basically. Oh. And they go out with a big whiteboard, they storyboard, and they sort of create a timeline of where they want their movies to go. And that's sort of the creative collective that makes these creative decisions God, as to, like, to how they make these movies. I would love to be oh, in I know, Especially now that they're like, we have a board with 20 more movies. I'm like, man... That's crazy yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Oh my yeah. God, what 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 we're talking what? about later? Like that's yeah. a whole nother. Yeah, I know. That's a whole Jesus thing. Christ. I know. Uh, also, the, the part of the other sort of shakeup in the Warner Brothers thing is uh, apparently Zack Snyder will not be back to make any more movies as of now. Uh, that's something that I think has that has sort of been going around for a while now. Yeah. I think for the time being, he's done with the DCU. I know some of the execs up at uh, with Time Warner actually did not want him Didn't back, want him back uh, mm -hmm. because of the. Successor failure of BBS and obviously with Justice League. And Ben Affleck's role is also in question, whether or not he's going to come back and be in Matt Reeves' movie. He's apparently contracted for one more movie, which they're saying is potentially going to be the Flash movie. Who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, and the Matt Reeves is obviously, there's rumors floating around that he's looking at other people to come in and play Batman. Whether that's going to be older or younger, we don't know. We're assuming younger, but... Just recast. I just heard something that John Hamm yeah. is apparently... Uh, Wait, in the running. Wait, re he re rescinded his statement? Who like, knows, man. Oh, my God. Yeah, because they're like, well, what about two trucks of money, John? Right? <laughs> and he was like, well, now you're talking. What about two and a half? Two and a half. Possibly three, three trucks. Three trucks backing up full of money. Just dumping it on your I mean, uh, honestly, we've talked about sort of the restructuring of the potential future of the DC yeah. Universe so much. None of this really surprises me, if I'm being honest. No. All, and also, none of this is really anything that excites me and or doesn't excite me. Mm -hmm. I think as of right now, it's all a waiting game. We're not going to know anything until probably January, February, March. Mm -hmm. Once some of these other movies start shooting, at some point at the beginning of next year, 
you know, with Wonder Woman slated to come out in the fall of 2019 and Shazam coming out in April of 2019, they're going to have to start informing us of sure. what's happening with some of these yeah. other movies. We don't have dates for anything else yeah. other than Shazam, Wonder Woman, and Aquaman. So I don't know. I think it's uh, going to be an interesting time in the beginning of the year to find out what's going to be happening with the DC movies. And I think I think if they wait until Comic-Con to talk about this stuff, it's going to be maybe too late. But yeah, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, Troy Flax. Someone on Twitter today said they might use Flashpoint to recast Affleck. So we've heard. We talked about that a lot, too, that yeah. they're going to try to use that storyline to bring in whatever actor Matt not. Reese casts. That um, I mean, seems weird to me. It, it does seem weird, but what other way could they do? I mean, just, just recast it. Just recast and not just, even talk just, about yeah. it. Just bond it. <laughs> just Don Cheadle, Mark Ruffalo it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess that's a way to. Just not, don't make it a big deal. Yeah. Don't you call know. more attention to it. Right. I think the fan base yeah. will make a big no, deal out right, of it because right. some, a lot of the fans really love Ben Affleck. Because it's Batman. Right. And I think at the end of the day, you know what, man? There's going to be plenty of other actors who are going to play Batman long after Ben Affleck. Yeah. Exactly. So it's not that big of a He's deal. Since I've been alive, there's been six actors that have played this character yeah. in films yeah. since I've Michael been alive. Keen, Val Kilmer, Kevin Conroy. Not even including George animated. Oh, yeah. Not even including Bale. like TV shows. Right. Younger actors. Yeah. Younger, ver- you know, kid actors that played exactly. Bruce Wayne. Like, like it's, it's, the role it's is not, not precious. The the it's not precious. It's not. I'm no, sorry. It's, it's, not. Not. it's, it's not. not. And the character will always be bigger than the actor that plays it anyway. So <laughs> yeah. it is crazy. what it is. Since I've been, because al- I was like, wait, I was born in 87. Mm-hmm. Michael Keaton was 89. Since since we've been alive, six actors have done this. I know. It's not that big of a deal, you know. Okay. I, I think you know. I know a lot of fans want to kind of. Fr- they always freak out and they want to <laughs> jump after people for their opinions about this. At the end of the day, I'm not sixty years old and six <laughs> actors. Have, does that make sense? It's like it hasn't been one every ten years. It's like Heck I'm you're thirty. In your, you're in the prime of life. I'm and just there have been I'm, six. I'm, Batman. I'm you're gonna see that, six more. I'm probably. doing that math. And my favorite is the seventh, Kevin Conroy. You know, and there's been <laughs> yeah, other yeah, voice yeah, actors yeah. that have, yeah. like. Yeah, not precious. I know it's going to be really interesting, but all, I mean, all I would say to people is like, don't freak out, don't jump at people because they have an opinion about this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Opinions are opinions, and honestly, a lot of these decisions that the studio is making is driven by the box office. Yeah, it's yeah. driven by money. Because you th- just because you think box. that the movies do really well doesn't mean that in the in the in the sure. bigger scheme, the bigger picture, that they actually are doing well. No, I mean, no. a lot of these studio expectations are that these movies are going to break a billion. Yeah. And when none of their movies, none of their movies break a billion, they're concerned. At, at the end of the day, there's people putting a lot of money into this, yeah. and they're not getting the money they were promised back. No, yeah. and that pisses people off. And nothing changes things in Hollywood more than that. Money, Where's my money, Denny. <laughs> money, exactly. money talks. Exactly. Bullshit money, walks, Denny. Man. Exactly. So I don't have it. That's the reality of it, guys. Whether here. you like it or not. Your I movies are underperforming. I'm just gonna not talk this episode. Ugh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> man. Terrible. Yeah. Do you need a lozenge need a or a lozenge. tea? Do we have no. a tea, like I a hot tea? You just wine. need more uh, sparkling more wine, bro. Wine. More it's tiny like, whiny. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Ah. So speaking about all things related to uh, Marvel, we're this gonna. This is insane. <laughs> He's Hector's very excited about this. No, I don't know. No, <laughs> yeah. no. At the at I love the way you broke this down. Mm-hmm. At the macro level, yes. This is horrifying. Yes. At the micro level, cool. Yes, yeah, but yeah. it's. It, I feel like Hector's jumping topics <laughs> on me, but that's remember, fine. Oh, we jump no, topics. Nope, it's yeah, fine. No, nope, we're, we're keep going, baby. Oh, you want to? I want your excitement about this thing. I want yeah, your no, excitement. No, keep going. Keep going. Um, you guys remember that part in the Matrix where uh the woman who had the white suit and had the white hair is about to get unplugged by Joey Pantoliano? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and not she like looks these. up. She looks up at Trinity and she's like, "Not like this. Right. Not like these. Not like this." Yeah, yeah. Done. Yeah. Done. That's how I feel about this topic because yeah. I'm like. This isn't how I wanted it. <laughs> yeah. To go. Well, so what we're talking about here is the mm. Disney's acquisition of Fox. Now, I know we talked about this in a previous episode. Not much has honestly really changed. It's still all we knew at that point was that the talks had ceased. Apparently, that wasn't the case. The talks are still ongoing. We will supposedly find out, but possibly next week, what the actual extent of the deal is. But apparently, it's a $60 billion <laughs> oh, deal what? for the acquisition <laughs> of so Fox. Much. Money. I mean, sense. if you think so about it, Fox is one money. of the longest running studios in Hollywood. It's yeah. been around, I believe, since like 1920. Why are they selling to be around? If this we don't know, why are we they don't selling? Know. What the hell? Are they in the red? They're twentieth century. They're not Fox. necessarily Yo, 50 in billion dollars, dog. They're not necessarily billion. sixty. 60 billion they're not necessarily in the red, but I think from what I've been reading about this, 1935. From what I've been reading <sighs> is that. They really want to consolidate and they really want to focus on one thing. And I right. think they've been spreading themselves too thin in a lot of ways, uh, probably both physically and financially. And, you know, yes, a lot of the movies do well, <laughs> but you have to also look at Fox. They have Fox Searchlight. They have, you know, 20th Century. 
Fox 2000, a lot of things that they do is also very independently driven. Yeah, so the return yeah. is not always that huge on their investments. They do have some superhero franchises. Deadpool was a huge breakout hit for them. Mm -hmm. But it's not like they have those things consistently year after year after year after right, year. Right. Avatar is coming out with four sequels. The last time we had an Avatar movie was in 2009. That money that they earned from that movie has probably long gone. Oh, they definitely. probably spent it definitely. on it's Alien gone. movies, Predator yeah. movies, X Men movies. And that's the highest grossing movie of all time. Yes, some and of the X Men movies have done really well. Some wow. of them, not so much. So you know, at the macro and the bigger picture, this could be good for Fox as a brand because it means that their properties live on. In the same way, when Marvel sold to Disney, yes, that kind of right. a thing. Because Lucasfilm what Disney get was Disney. what Disney gets out of okay. it. They get 20th Century Fox, both film and television. They get thirty percent. And that's already already right there. Yes. Like, holy shit. Yes. Yeah. Because that's the Simpsons yeah. Family that's Guy. The Simpsons. Yeah. A twenty. Like they're gonna Fox have to television. tear the Simpsons down from the Universal Studios lot and put it at Disneyland. It no, at Disney. they're not gonna put the Simpsons at Disneyland. No, they're not going that, to. You know, they're that's not. insane yeah. though. Yeah. It's crazy. But they're gonna have to remove it from Universal. Film yes. and television. Yeah. Film not and necessarily television. because Marvel is still at Universal Studios Florida. Yes. They have the Islands of Adventure because that deal was put in place before Disney oh, bought Marvel. So like Universal yeah. Studios and The Simpsons might I just have want some them deal. To tear down that stupid ride because it makes me so it's sick. It's so yeah, gross. Like it was, there there like was barf in there last time I went in yeah. there. Like, oh, that's and disgusting. I love this. I love The Simpsons. That's horrible. I love The Simpsons. This is bizarre. So just you saying 20th Century Fox film and television yes. is the most massive thing ever. Yes. So Disney could potentially own that. So so there, this is there was there well done. There was a picture. Yeah. Uh, it's a screenshot from one of the episodes where Goofy's holding Homer and, and Mickey Mouse is punching him in the gut. Oh my god! <laughs> Ridiculous. Wait, I think it was from an episode. I'm not sure either. Oh, that really? It wasn't good. Goofy and Mickey. It was <laughs> Itchy and Scratchy. Then no, it must have been. No. It must. It must have been Homer at Itchy and Scratchy Land. Getting maybe with like weird, weird like and Goofy was, and Mickey lookalikes. And there was also a picture from The Simpsons where there was some future or something where they showed a picture of 20th Century Fox and it mm -hmm. said a Walt Disney Corporation on the bottom. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, they predicted that. Shit. They pre they, that. The Simpsons, because it's been around forever, have predicted yeah. so much. Oh, wow. yeah. So, okay, yeah. so there's Sorry, already Adam. that. Keep so, going. what next? So, so bigger picture stuff. The acquisition. 20th Century Fox, television and film. Or, yeah, television and film. 30% of Hulu because that's the, that's the stake that um, Fox, Fox owns, which would give Disney 60% of control of Hulu. Which means they might turn it off. No, because no, they, they will turn it off. I don't think so. We'll turn it off. We'll we'll, we'll talk okay, about it. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> which if Comcast gives up their their share, it means that at that point Disney would be a majority stake uh, shareholder of of Hulu. Uh, they will also get the FX networks and the National Ge Geographic networks. There's wow. multiple on both. Wow. And they will acquire some of the sports networks: Fox Sports One, Fox Sports mm. Two, a few other ones. Um, but it's gonna be really interesting because I know Fox itself really wants to focus on sports and news. So at the micro, in terms of the details of it, figuring out exactly how those deals work, whether or not Fox Studios will continue as a film studio yeah. under the Disney banner, yeah. who knows? Like Miramax or something. Exactly. Yeah. These, yeah. these sort of things. It's not like on Wednesday they announced that Disney has officially acquired Fox. Right. And on, when, and on Thursday, people are walking into Disney Studios. Right, right. It's a long 12 to 18 month transition. Mm -hmm. They need to figure out. They need to figure out what positions are staying and going, mm -hmm. what roles are going to move over into Disney, mm -hmm. what people are going to move over. It is a. It is an extremely long process. Yeah. yeah. So I think on a business level, we're not really going to see the full sort of changing of the guard, a year and a half, sure. two years. Yeah. In terms of the films, I think that's also going to be a very, very detailed thing that's going to have to be worked out. Because they obviously have a bunch of franchises that are in motion right now. We've right. got the Avatar right. movies, X Men movies, Deadpool two, X Force, Dark Phoenix, the New Mutants. We've got a Gambit movie coming. We've got a Multiple Man movie with James Franco coming. So there's a lot of factors that are gonna have to work work into this. And to be in those meeting meetings, having to figure out what those deals are gonna be, is extremely. A, I would say probably the biggest pain in the ass you could ever probably conjure up in the world. Absolutely. Yeah, so, so Absolutely. right there, Sergeant Abby says, so Disney would own ESPN and Fox Sports? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's not good. It's not. So, and I mean, crazy. The last time we talked about this, we talked about that that Disney actually, because they they're going to cherry pick the things that they want. Yeah. But the last time we talked about it, Fox Sports and Fox Sports 2 were things that they were not going to acquire. Right, right, right. This report says that they are going to take ownership of it. How that's sort so of weird. going to, you know, affect ESPN? No clue. 
The business side of it, I have no idea. We just how have that's to wait work. for details. Yeah, we just have to wait for details really at that point. And those are details that may take months and months yeah. and months to months to figure yeah. out. The most interesting to me, though, is how is this going to affect their movies? Because we talked about it last time. Fox takes risks sometimes with these crazy independent movies like Revenant. Mm-hmm. Even The Martian, to a certain extent, like that's a risky movie. Mm-hmm. It's Ridley Scott, but, you know, hit and miss. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with those sort of movies that they're going to put out. Are they going to leave the Fox division to be its own thing and then take the Marvel properties and integrate some of them into the Marvel Cinematic Universe and then leave things like Deadpool and tell these sideways X-Men stories like New Mutants, mm-hmm. you know, parallel to that universe that will exist on their own? It's super, super interesting to sort of think about how that will work. Kevin Feige has a lot of... He's got nostalgia glasses when it comes to X-Men because he was an associate producer on the first one. Of course. And that was really his first step into the Marvel Universe. And I also hope that that little tiny micro... So like at the macro level, this is fucking terrifying and could be really, really bad because people could obviously lose jobs, which is the shitty thing. And secondly, the less competition there is, the shittier things get because competition means excellence for us, for consumers. Mm -hmm. Competition means... Innovation and you know finding ways to do things less expensive and exactly. less costly. But exactly. if there's no competition, that's a monopoly and that's the bad. Cat yeah. gets fatter. Yeah. I mean, look at the. Wants I mean, if you just look at the release calendar, it's a disproportionate amount of like how much Disney owns on the release calendar. Sure. Uh, if they were to acquire Fox, I mean, that's every major movie minus what Warner Brothers is putting out sure. at DC and maybe Paramount if they do more Star Trek and Transformers movies, mm-hmm. which and it sounds Universal, like they are. With its Fast and Furious movies once sure. every three years or two yeah. years. And the Monster Universe is not know, going well. It's, so. it's, yeah. it's, I mean, I mean, and even think about it, what you said, Hector, with the with the competition, there's not a lot of competitors right now that are yeah. putting out yeah. 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 There's Marvel like, what, quality movies. There's like, four movie studios? <coughs> exactly. There used to be five. There used to be six. Like it's mm-hmm, it's, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And at the micro level, yeah, it makes me real happy as a nerd to hear that Kevin Feige likes the X-Men because I, again, I hope that somebody like Kevin Feige, because my little nerd heart since I was a kid has has felt that the Marvel brand is incomplete without the X-Men and vice versa. The X-Men are incomplete Mm -hmm. without the larger Marvel universe. The Marvel universe is incomplete without the Mm X-Men. I've never been like, they should be separate because it's confusing. No, man. You know, Wolverine eventually right. is an Avenger, and the Mag- yeah. and, Mag- and Magneto is the father of Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. Right. And I love these characters, and I love that aspect of it. So yeah, it's cool to hear that Kevin Feige is nostalgic, and I'm sure that they have plans for integrating those characters. Mm-hmm. And I want to see Wolverine and Hulk fight, and that of shit's course. rad. Of course, yeah. but I didn't want it this way. No, I wanted it to be a thing like <laughs> Sony and Marvel eventually did with Spider Man. Right. Where they were like, let's a join deal. A join deal. Let's yeah. put our stuff together um, for this not one franchise. Sell out right. to you, but you know, we'll talk. That's, yeah. that's what it should have oh, been. Boy. They they should I I was really, really hoping that this was gonna be a Sony deal. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, we're getting merging of these two giant companies, which I am not in, in at at all agreeing with whatsoever. I want Doctor Doom to be in this universe as much as anybody oh, yeah. else does. Yeah, yeah. But not not like this. That's just gonna just title not this like episode this. not like this. Not like this. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, this. Like not like this. Like this. I'm also very curious about how it's going to work with the television shows because obviously now the deal that Disney has with Netflix, we don't know exactly how far that deal goes as far as we know. It's for the characters that we have now. Punisher was the spinoff and then two to three additional seasons of those characters. But after that, I mean, they have not announced any additional characters. No Ghost Rider, no no Blade, none of that stuff. What they have announced is next year we're getting Daredevil season (laughs) Three. three. Yep. Jessica Jones season two, two and Luke Cage season and two, and Iron, season season two. Season two. and Iron Fist season two. All happening 2018 next year? Or I don't like know if they're all happening. I'm not sure if they're all happening next year, but I, I'm not sure where Iron Fist is going to fall. But no announcement of a Defender season two, no announcement of a Punisher season two. Yeah. So I think they're kind of waiting to see and they're going to play it out. Absolutely. I think Absolutely. I think what they may end up doing, because they have shows like Runaways that actually exist on Hulu, being a majority oh, stakeholder in Hulu, mm-hmm. you may as well leave some of those things just on Hulu yeah. And then move some of the other ones to your Disney streaming service. Yeah. Or you flip it and you put the more kid-friendly ones, like Runaways, which, you know, kid-friendly. You put those on, on Disney, on Disney yeah. and you move the more adult, mature ones to right, Hulu. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. So I think that's going to be really know. interesting to see how that's going to work and when <laughs> we will get sort of an announcement yeah. as to yeah. when some of these shows are going to move on to their second, third, yeah. fourth seasons and get characters like Blade Ghost Rider in this universe. So yep. I didn't yep. want I didn't want Disney to own twentieth century fucking no. Fox no. and like Fox Sports <laughs> and National Geographic. Yeah. I just wanted to see 
Wolverine fight the Hulk yeah, like that. I just want to see, see the blue and yellow suit on screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. oh, boy. I want to see Doctor Doom tear up Reed Richards next to I don't know. Yes, like Iron Wolverine Man. But we'll find Spider-Man out. You know, wow. they're 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 it's saying nuts. that potentially sometime next week. I think I heard somewhere Wednesday. Um, we'll find out though, and maybe on Wednesday we'll be talking about it, and maybe they'll have details as to like how this is going to work, how the Marvel movies will integrate into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, how they're going to sort of treat these two studios. Is is Fox Studios? 20th Century Fox is going to remain a studio just under the Disney banner. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see. Shiny Diver says, really pessimistic, y'all three. Look, man, traditionally, look, man or woman, traditionally, (laughs) when I don't think, I can't remember the last time a deal like this massive has ever happened, first of all. There's really no precedent. There's mergers, but it's usually, usually it's not studio to studio. It's like, it's like uh, Albertsons bought Lucky. Yeah. Lucky's. And what happens to Lucky's? (laughs) Lucky's went away, dude. Lucky's just turned into Albertsons. Amazon buys Whole Foods, you know, that type of stuff. It's two very different (laughs) sort of companies. And it's, uh, this, this does not bode well. People are going to lose jobs. People are going to lose their jobs so Absolutely. Absolutely. it's it is it's one thing to be like this is cool because my characters can now meet other characters mm-hmm. but how many movies are going to get stopped how many jobs are going to get lost yeah. how many yeah, exactly. you know it, the shrinking is not good growing is good yeah, yeah. Exactly. Gro- i want everybody to be successful Disney grows but fox yeah, dude. at the same time yeah. so people are going to be, be yeah. lost. i mean with fox. the success of when they when they acquired pixar and lucasfilm and marvel and all that stuff they know how to do it mm-hmm. they know how to do it and, I, and, and it's a lot of it is because they have the money they have the money. That studio dominates in Hollywood. I mean, yeah. their box office revenue every year is exponentially greater than everybody else's. Yeah. So yeah. they got the hits. I mean, you look at their release slate for every year, and it's like major movies. I'm just excited what these details are going to be. Like, so, I want yeah. to get to these details at this point, but yeah. we just have to wait. Yeah. Speaking of Fox, Marvel, we got a first look <laughs> at X-Men Dark Phoenix. Did you guys you get a chance to check this out in the EW? I saw some uh, pictures, yeah. Yeah, it. I'm, cool. I'm, uh, I'm really intrigued by this. So a lot of people are talking about how it's very soon and too early for this Dark Phoenix movie. It's never going to be the right time. It's never going to be the right time. I mean, I, people will make... Yeah, LA's on fire, guys. Yeah. We don't need a fire character. I mean, if you really think about it, you know, starting with X-Men, First Class, going into Days of Future Past, Apocalypse, this is now technically the fourth movie, part of this kind of revamped X-Men mm-hmm. universe. Yeah, when is the right time to do it? Who knows? I'm intrigued by this only because I feel like the Dark Phoenix movie that we got last time was... Subpar. It, it, it was a footnote in a larger movie. It was. Of the, I think the larger theme was like a mutant cure, and yes. it didn't really get to focus on Jean Grey, right. that character. So Exactly. Uh, I'm really yeah. curious to see. This is the first X-Men movie that takes the heroes to space. They're gonna so be, they are going to go to space? They're going to space. What the fuck? They're okay. going to space. They're going to be part of a... Part <laughs> of a full X-Men, dude. Mm-hmm. They're, gonna be, they're going on, on a mission to save some astronauts. Yeah. While that happens, yeah. uh, there's like a solar flare... You Jean see that Grey, like tries to stop it. That's it's how the Phoenix is. That, but that kind of pisses me off yeah. that they have to find a way to bring the characters into space. So they're like they're going to save some astronauts because yeah. in the comic books it wasn't that. It was literally no. space characters coming down. And be like now you're on sp- you're, now you're in space <laughs> sure, sure. because they're the Marvel universe because the Marvel space. universe was already at a point where yeah. that shit happened. Yeah. So it wasn't crazy to have the X Men characters from this school mixing it up with the Shi'ar like in space for a week. Yeah. You know be- because that because that world. And the world building was already at that point right, in the right, 70s, right. that yeah. it was 20 years this, of, you know. So that description that you gave, Adam, just it just bringing flashbacks of Fantastic Four in my head. I'm just like, oh, right? yeah. no, stop. Yeah. No. What, if this is the, what if this is their moment to reintroduce the Fantastic Four? Uh, oh, what I'm if don't. those are the astronauts they're trying That's to That's what save. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm stupid. It'll be, yeah, it'll be I'm really interesting that. to see. Uh, I'm intrigued by this mostly because this is Sam and Kimberg's directorial debut. Sure. Uh, he's done a really killer job writing and doing a lot of uh, other creative work on Star Wars Rebels, mm-hmm. some of the other X-Men movies. I think X-Men Apocalypse was probably the low, the low, low. Um, and he's also done a great job as a producer on other stuff, like yes. Fantastic Four. Yes. So, yes. you know. And a lot of that, you know, it's it's so hard to really say exactly what Simon Kimberg sure. messed up or didn't mess up because mm-hmm. we don't know how much interference the studio has. But you know, this Fantastic will be Four this was will be a f- big mess up. But this will be the first time it's like, okay, dude, yes. you're the director. You, yes. ca- you take all the blame. Yeah. You know, if it's yeah. bad, yeah, and if it's good, the the hopefully the whole crew will take the praise. But yeah. like, mm-hmm. you know, all right. Yeah. One thing that Kimberg said that like as visual effects artists, we can definitely appreciate. He says, in order to properly visualize the fiery transformation of Jean Grey into Phoenix, the new X Men film has a lar- a longer post production period than usual, nearly Great. a year. Great. Simon Kimberg says, I wanted oh. the m- I wanted the most post time to deliver on the nuance of the visual effects, not just the scale of them. That takes time. Yeah. 
We preach about that yeah. shit yeah. every time we review a movie. Yep. Mm-hmm. We'll see if he delivers on that promise. It's, I mean, these are these are all <laughs> really really good things, and it sucks that I could not be less excited about this movie. I'm just yeah. Yeah. It, I'm not excited. I saw the pictures. They all seem very lackluster to me. Like those fire effects are whack. Whatever they're they're like Photoshop fire effects. Sure. Yeah, I don't think it's they're not I don't even think visual full effects. C- yeah, no, I think, it's not CG. I think it's just photoshopping it's legit, Sophie Turner. Like it's legit individual. Yeah. It's it's bad. I I, I hate it's, to call it bad, but it's and, bad. And look, man, you know, we talked about this with Cyborg. I thought he looked way better in motion yes, for the most did. part. So yes, it's a thing did. of like yeah, we're we're looking forward to seeing what that looks like in motion yeah. in a trailer. Yeah. But you don't have to feel bad, dude, because it's not it's not your fault. A movie franchise is only as good as its last entry, probably. Very true. Very like true. when I say Terminator, Terminator one and two are classics. Yeah. But like you're you'll think of Terminator Genesis, <laughs> and so the next movie has to ha- has to fight against that. It can't just continue to rest on the laurels right. of yeah. remember how good Terminator two Judgment Day was. Yeah. Yeah. X Men. Remember that was twenty five years ago. Yeah, X Men franchise can't just be like X two X Men United, right? 2004, <laughs> come and watch the 2003. 2003. 2003 yeah, dog. it can't. No. It needs to be like X Men Apocalypse. Yep. Was the last one. I did not enjoy X Men Apocalypse. Not a lot of people That's did. That's why I'm not excited about this. Sure. Mm-hmm. It's just it, sure. it's hard for me to get worked up when I should be so fucking excited about this. Yeah. Movie. Because the Dark Phoenix. I mean, the Phoenix is one of the most powerful characters in the Marvel universe. Mm-hmm. We should be fucking crazy. We should react to her like we reacted to Thanos. Like yeah. this is the type of level yeah. character she is. And they're playing her up like, oh, yeah, she, she's a fire lady. Mm-hmm. And she gets her power from the sun. And that's <laughs> it. Like, yeah. there's no, yeah. like, mega scope to this, which yeah. sucks because she deserves all that. Yeah, it was interesting to read some of the stuff that that Kim Berg and Jennifer Lawrence were talking about this movie, saying that this is probably the most dramatic of X-Men movies, which oh, I feel like Days of Future Past was pretty heavy on the drama. Not mm-hmm. in a bad way. I actually really liked that movie. That movie was... that. That's what rekindled my Yeah, my I thought that, I thought that movie really hit all the notes really, really well. Good emotional through line. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So it's going to be interesting to see in what way this movie is the most dramatic movie. Some of the pictures reveal that there's potential death in the in the movie. Who that ends up being, who knows? Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see sort of if they're doubling down on the dramatic elements of X Men, how so? How does that affect the characters? Where are we pushing these characters? We're now entering the 90s of X Men. Um, what is that going to do for this franchise? Are we going to go into you know the 2000s? Is it going to be a 10 year sort of a 10 year jump with every single movie? At what point do these er- characters actually age? <laughs> are they going to be 20, they 20 forever? They don't. I don't know. I don't know That's man. why they're using Mystique for everything because she yeah. just goes on forever. She'll, Jennifer Lawrence uh, is actually the one who convinced Simon Kimber to direct this movie. And Simon I Kimber. I don't want to see another Mystique movie. And Simon Kimber goes like, God, "I'll only do it if it. you agree to." And she went, "Shit." No. Interesting. Oh God. Uh, I don't even think she wants to be Mystique anymore. Here's the thing I'm she's really over excited the paint about. Job. That's God. Sure. Jessica Chastain's the villain, though, right? Yes. That's kind of. Aw- I love Jessica Chastain. That's awesome. And she's probably I can't playing. Wait to see Molly's game. She's probably playing Lalandra of the Shi'ar, right? Yeah, they haven't yeah, maybe said. Was, maybe. She's supposed to be some know. sort of alien being, as far as I'm concerned. Well, and the <laughs> event and the event in yeah. space is kind of what activates oh. her presence in the movie. Read a little bit of what she said there. Sure. Uh, item number C, because I feel like <laughs> from that we can we can uh, extrapolate that she's playing Sure. Lelandra. So the article in EW says, Chastain's villain is quiet but brutal. Simon and I were talking about the character, and I said, I keep thinking of the vet who tells you you need to put your dog down, says the actress of her inspiration. There's something very clinical about that. So Lalandra, Empress Lalandra yeah. of the uh, Shi'ar, is, is somebody who c- goes to Charles Xavier and goes, we need to kill the Phoenix Force. And I'm sorry that that's your student, your pupil, your friend, Jean Grey, but we need to kill this being because she's too powerful. And, and, but she's also kind of a sympathetic... She, yeah. At times in the X-Men world, yeah. she's been yeah. an antagonist, but she's also been a love interest right, to Charles right. Xavier. She is an ally for the most part. She's like a good guy for the most part. Um so that's I bet you who she's playing, and I like that pitch, and uh, yeah, that's she's cool. Supposed to be an alien, okay. alien shapeshifter. And she is. She's an oh, she's a shapeshifter. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's like an alien bird lady <laughs> in the comics. Yeah, I don't she know. is like a bird lady. She doesn't. She's, like, she's, she's not like a shapeshifter. Hair feathers, like yeah. weird, yeah, like black she has this things. Weird which who knows, man? She could. Thing. That could be her original form, and then sure. she shapeshifts into Jessica Maybe. Chastain. Which we know. have another shapeshifter. God damn it! I know. I what? know. Okay, okay, never mind. I never scroll. Mind. I don't know. I don't know. I. I the, maybe she's the scroll queen, right? I mean, as, as I far know. as it as far as it goes in terms of this movie, I'm not necessarily jumping up and down for it. You know, sure. I wasn't necessarily the most excited about New Mutants, and I saw the, the teaser and I went, "Okay, I'm into it's this." Interesting, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm interested. Prove so us wrong. 
it's it's for really on Simon Kimberg and Fox to really figure out what can we do that's different. That's not what we've done for the last eight movies. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes that can be easy, depending on if your movies have the same tone over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, we'll find out. We'll find out. Okay. I don't know, uh, let's jump over to the world of the DC universe. Back to some casting. Jack Dylan Grazer joins Shazam. Um, he was in It. He cool. played uh, Eddie Kasprak in It. I actually thought he was uh, really funny in that movie. Mm-hmm. Was he the um uh the, what's the what's the word I'm thinking of? The one who was like uh, uh had the asthma and had the which one was Eddie? No, I don't think he had. I don't, I don't think he had I asthma. Know. I don't know. He which was the one. He was of? he was the one who like when they go into the tunnel underground, he was like, you know how many like diseases are in here? The kid with the black hair. Oh, he has like almost a bowl cut. Not oh, really no, no, a bowl no, no, no. cut. Oh, the, he was like the little, um, like the little properly dressed kid. Yes. Right. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he had a broken arm, I think, didn't he? Yeah, I think he had a broken arm. Yeah, in that's, the movie. The, that's yeah. a kid who had uh, asthma because his yeah. mom. Yeah. Because his mom made yes. him think he was oh, sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're he was right. hilarious. Yeah, he was the one with the freaky mother. Yeah. Yep. Great. Yep. <laughs> great. So great. he's he's gonna be playing Freaking Freddie Freeman, who's a friend of Billy Batson. Uh, this character apparently ends up being Captain Marvel Jr. Yes, correct. Eventually, Billy shares his Shazam power in the comics with. With, with a bunch of cool uh, kids, with ki- yeah, it, with his kid, with this kid and Mary Marvel mm-hmm. Jr. or Mary whatever her last name is, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then they become the Marvel family and the, or the Shazam family. So yeah. that's great. And I think he looks like he looks like uh, C- Captain Marvel Jr. The kid, um, Eddie, the actor, mm-hmm. Eddie. What's his last name? Casprack. No, Kasprak. it's uh, Jack Dylan Grazer. Oh, Jack Dylan Grazer. That makes more sense. Eddie Casprack <laughs> was his it character's <laughs> name. Um, but um, but it's weird because like. Shazam is a certain age, and I think uh, 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 Freddie Freeman, Billy, or Freddie Freeman, Captain Marvel Jr. is supposed mm-hmm. to be a little bit older, mm-hmm. I think, so that when Billy turns into Shazam and he's an adult, when he turns into Captain Marvel Jr., he stays looking the same, but he just has powers. Oh, <laughs> so I feel like <laughs> they're, they're, they might make him a little <coughs> bit. Well, you know, by the time that movie comes out, he'll probably be like thirteen. Yeah, exactly. 16 he'll be years a little old. bit older. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's cool. Good for him. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, J- J- um, not uh, David Sandberg on his Instagram. If you follow him, he posts an entire chart of casting. He's got three roles filled. He's got Zachary Levi as Shazam, uh, the kid who plays Billy Batson, and then this role. Yeah, there are literally like thirty question mark pages on on the oh, thing. Oh, great! Cool. Nice. Uh, whether okay. or not The Rock is going to be in it, he hasn't said. I There's a spot so. right between Zachary Levi and Billy Batson of like a question, question mark. Marks, uh-huh. So. It could either end up being The Rock or it could end up being whatever. Mar- I, th- I think we talked about Mark Strong. Mark Strong, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 As, as the villain, down? it's not logged in, locked in, apparently. All right, get him in there. So we'll see. But I'm excited for the casting. I, yeah. All these kids from, from the It movies that are slowly getting roles and stuff, and all the kids from Stranger Things, like these are really talented kids. You yeah. should be using them in other movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Agreed. I'm excited Agreed. for it. Uh, we also got a first look at Jason Momoa and Aquaman, which is. He looks, he looks like Aquaman. He's Aquaman. It's, he's Aquaman. It's, yeah. Uh, I was a little more I- intrigued by what James Wan is saying. This is all part of the EW magazine, by the way. Um, he talks about sort of the tone of the movie and how it's going to differ from Justice League. And he says, it's going to look very different. It's going to feel very different aesthetically, tonally, story-wise. <laughs> it's my own take. It's a much more traditional action-adventure quest movie, which I think the interesting part about that is when he says, it's my own take. Uh, because we know that Warner Brothers has really sort of double down on saying that they are a very director-driven studio. Mm-hmm. Right. In, in times, right, we feel like right. that's not the case because Zack Snyder's movie gets completely changed. Other movies get changed. Other movies are very director-driven. Mm-hmm. So I'm intrigued to see sort of how true that is. Yeah, I would hope that we're going to get a trailer fairly soon, I imagine, uh, with, with Star Wars coming out. I almost thought that we would get a trailer with Star Wars. It doesn't mm-hmm. come out for a year, though. Yeah. Sure. But Star Wars didn't come out for a year, and they gave us a teaser trailer at the very yeah, least. Yeah, that's true. Didn't they give us that weird... That was a Comic-Con. Teaser trailer. The Comic-Con, Comic-Con trailer, yeah. yeah. That was a little, little weird. Yeah, a little sizzle reel. But in terms of the look, I mean, <laughs> he looks great. He looks like Aquaman. So I'm excited. And James Wan also talked about how, or J- uh, Jason Momoa talked about how this is very much an origin. We're going to go back. We're going to see how he be- how he came to be, you know, the relationship of his parents, his father being from, from mainland and his mother yeah. being Atlantean yeah. and how that's sort of going to work. So it'll be interesting to see the origin of the character. I'm Curious to see how it sort of works itself out in terms of us meeting him in Justice League and then going back and telling the backstory later. Right, it right. feels a little Star Warsy with telling Darth Vader's story first and then going back and doing the prequels. How it lines yeah. up will be interesting to see and how it sort Here, of expands the universe. Here's an interesting thing that uh, Momoa says, too. Mm-hmm. This was all interesting. He says, 
Then the little boy being raised and finding his powers and going through that and never being accepted on either side Mm -hmm. and then becoming this man who puts up all these walls. You just slowly see this man harden up and be completely reluctant wanting to be king and not knowing what to do with these powers he has. I think James Wan just killed it. So that's interesting because Mm -hmm. it's not Mm -hmm. uh, a usual... Aquaman. It's not the traditional Aquaman. We yeah, know. the mm. sort of reluctant king. I don't yeah. think maybe it is, and maybe they're really leaning into that aspect yeah. of the character, which might be well in Justice cool, League. But in Justice League, it sort of seemed sure. like Aquaman was a character who he would sometimes be in the ocean, sometimes yeah. he'd be in Norway, yeah. and when we saw him with Mera, it seems like their dialogue, their exchanges were leaning towards Aquaman being a character who didn't necessarily spend a lot of time in Atlantis. Right. He would yeah. be all around the place and then sort of show up on shore, right. go back, and, and go then back. really yeah. Very much a wanderer. Forth. Yes, very much a drifter like, didn't almost. Didn't know his place. An but ocean drifter. We all know that the Momoa Aquaman is very different from the traditional <laughs> sort of super friends, yes. you know, right. boisterous, brave, very heroic he's not yeah, yeah, yeah. Aquaman. He's not a, not a white guy either. Um, but not like even just personality, not just looks, but personality-wise, Momoa yeah. is this really like like you're saying, hardened guy. Yeah. And for them to yeah. try to explain that by saying, well, he never belonged to either world, and we might show him as he comes up to sort of build up these walls, yeah. I think that that could be really cool, but it's yeah. just like different. He's so more of far, a rebel. You know? He's not a king. He's a rebel. Yeah. yeah. Like he would be riding an underground, or an underwater like motorcycle if he could. Yes. Yeah, you as know? opposed to the seahorse, which yeah, he normally exactly. rides. Yes. Or a dolphin or yeah, something, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. Okay. And I think, I think that also speaks to, you know, actually having Jason Momoa as the guy playing the role. Right, mm-hmm. right. I think if you had somebody else who didn't have sort of what Jason Momoa has in sure. terms of his personality, yeah. Yeah. I don't think James Wan would have tailored it that way for that actor. But Maybe I think, not. Maybe not. You know, having him as Aquaman, I think that, that definitely sort of influences the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also got our first look at Robin from Titans. Mm-hmm. Cool, man. People I thought that looked it. really like cool. Yeah. yeah. I thought it looked great. Yeah. Uh, he's definitely a young Robin. Like, it's Dick Grayson yes. in Titans. I'm used to seeing a 30-year-old playing this role. Yeah. I'm used to seeing, yeah. you know, a Joseph Gordon-Levitt, a Chris O'Donnell, just yeah. like an adult who, like, a couple episodes in or a season in is like, I'm Nightwing now. Yep. But this kid, right. Brendan, Brenton Thwaites, looks young. He's probably in his mid-20s. Yeah. But he yep. looks like he could also be playing at 15 years, right, years right, old. Right, right, right. So I don't know how long we're going to stay with this Robin. As he, uh, hopefully he transitions well, into Nightwing. Remember I'd we like were that. talking about that last yeah. time. What a cool story arc would it be yeah. if you show the breakup of Batman yes. and Robin. I agree, know, yeah. Until... Till he turns into Nightwing, or even like focus a little bit, like they do on the animated Teen Titans show. Mm-hmm. That's like, it's it, the Batman's in it sometimes, yeah. but it's yeah. just like quick and then he's out and then he's out. Yep. Yeah, just mentioned. Yeah, yeah, I think it looks awesome. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, the cool. suit definitely has more of like uh, some people are pointing out. It's got a, a very like Tim Drake sort of feel to yep. it. Yeah, where he's got yeah. the staff and and even the design of the suit. Robin yeah. traditionally, you know, he's got the yellow cape, full yellow. Mm-hmm. This one obviously kind of embraces the black exterior, yeah. yellow interior. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it's fine. I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't think in this Titan show we're gonna see sort of a progression of multiple Robins right, yet. Right, right. I think if they do the arc of Dick Grayson transitioning into Nightwing from Robin, then sure, it's totally possible that we could see, you know, Jason Todd or Tim Drake come in at some point and yeah. sort of take yeah. over these roles. Uh, but I, th- I think we're a ways away, and I, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm definitely. glad that they're just focusing uh, on Dick Grayson because mm-hmm. I feel like he's a Robin. He's the original. Yeah, and he's been to the movies, but he still has not gotten. But his he view hasn't really in had action. I want. I yeah. really want to see the arc of that character. We got. We kind of got glimpses of it in Batman and Robin. As bad as that movie is, mm-hmm. a little there, bit. There was a little, a little hint of it, even with the suit. I mean, the yeah. suit is very much a Nightwing suit with a cape. Yeah. So I think. There was sort of an exploration that there was potential to see that character in the sixth mo- or the fifth movie actually full on become Nightwing, right. but it never made it that far. Right, so right, right. we'll see what the show does. I'm I'm actually really intrigued and curious about the show. I really enjoyed the photo yeah. and yeah. seeing the suit. It seems like they're really going with the utilitarian sort of tactical DC films version of it. Like I I could look at this Robin and see him paired up next to Bat- Ben Affleck's Batman yeah. and it would almost work. Yeah. yeah. I right. think it's very yeah. close I from agree. working. I agree. So I'm I'm excited about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean I was I was surprised. I actually caught up on the runaways. Nice. So if you guys haven't done it yet, I catch up on the yet. runaways. Yeah. Good? It's I'm actually good. Yeah. The first the first couple episodes are kinda like, oh what Yeah, is which this? is I think what Zach said. Yeah. yeah. But once you get past that, like me and my girlfriend were watching and she even she was just the first two episodes was like, this is terrible. Turn it off. Third episode she was like it just got interesting. Yeah, so it's good. Like good. if, nice. if good, they good. pull something like that with this show, I'm totally yeah. down. Like yeah. I'm, re- I, I don't care if it's a film or if it's a movie. I'm sorry, if it's a film or if it's on TV. Like tell yeah. me a good story and I'll yeah. watch it for sure. Yep. 
Uh, the Purple Hand is asking, uh, as quickly as the kid on Gotham is growing up, do you think they may make him Batman in a t- for a TV series? No. No, uh, that wasn't know. the point or, of the show. Or maybe because Batman's the most popular character in the world. Right. And yeah. they've already been doing A Dark Knight. Yeah. Where he has a goofy mask on. Yeah. He looks because ratings, because, like, because that show being on Fox probably gets even more ratings than anything on the CW. Right, so that's yeah, why Gotham right. has continued to be a show because <laughs> ratings. So yeah, that, I don't know, man. That, the, every time I see ads for that show and kind of where they're going, I'm always like, Y'all should have just made a Batman show. Honestly, That's I didn't even know that show was still on. It is. <laughs> it is. It's on <laughs> season four or five now. Yeah, but I feel like the uh, fact that you even asked that question, the Purple Hand, means maybe yeah, because yeah. you're because you're interested. You're like, do you think they might make him Batman? Right. You and millions of people are asking the same question, so they might make him Batman. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we'll see. What didn't what didn't they pitch that show as saying Bro, this I know, was dude. not going to be? I know. I'm sorry. Wasn't it? <gasps> lo siento. Lo siento. Gotham pero Central? no. Gotham Central is that the comic book? Oh, that's a great comic. Yeah, was that, that was that what they were originally no, pitching? They no, they, they pitched no. specifically they pitched, say they pitched Smallville. Yeah. I feel like, but in sure. but in Gotham. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Like, so instead of being called Smallville, we'll call it Gotham. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Basically. And then they, I think they got like uh, uh, not interesting enough yeah. characters. Yeah. Riddler, Poison Ivy, Scarecrow, the Joker, Batman. Yeah. Don't do the villains, dude. Like, oh come on. On, man. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, at that point, you're making a Batman show, and Jim Gordon's your Batman, but not. But eventually, Smallville was like Metallo, Mr. McZipsel Spitlick, sure, Brainiac, sure. Luthor. Mm-hmm. Well, Luthor was always. But I, I feel like that's where the show it's kind of earned. lost its edge. Yeah, it, I agree. I yeah. feel like the first four seasons where we focused more on Clark Kent, In the development school. of his powers, yeah. development of his relationship with his friends, with Lex Luthor, yeah. how his powers affected him, oh, yeah. man. his psychology. To me, that was the like the Red Kryptonite episodes. Especially at the end of season two, where he leaves Smallville after the the ship destroys like yeah. the farm and stuff, so good. Yeah, that was like real emotional Superman shit, which earned. I loved. Mm-hmm. Earned. earned, earned, earned with the T. Earned it, earned he- it, Hector. They earned it, Hector. I think this next topic might tickle your pickle. This is, <laughs> and I'm using this word on purpose. Fucking insane. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino is apparently making a Star Trek movie what or developing a Star Trek movie like? or pitched a Star Trek movie to J.J. Abrams. What? <laughs> uh? So I think uh, what? I think Quentin Tarantino did a podcast in 2015, and Probably. somebody asked him about a, about franchise movies. This is what we know famously he's not into that sort of a thing. But somebody asked him if he would want to direct a Star Wars movie. I think, and I think this was probably around the time Force Awakens was coming out. And he said, "Actually, no. I actually would be very interested and intrigued by Star Trek. Apparently, he's a huge fan of the original series. Interesting. I'm not sure exactly how much of Star Trek he's followed. <laughs> quotes an ancient Klingon uh-huh. proverb in Kill uh-huh. Bill. Uh huh. Oh, that's true. Yeah. He does. yeah. Revenge yeah. is a dish best served cold. Yes. Quote ancient Klingon proverb. That's something that people were th- pointing to when this news came up because it seems mm-hmm. so out of left field. It's so way I don't out of doubt left that field. he likes Star Trek. Right. I don't right, doubt right. that he thinks that shit is cool because it's Quentin Tarantino. Okay man, yeah. let me tell okay man, let me tell you man. Like okay, here's <laughs> here would be my, my pitch on like Star Trek, okay? It's like it's like fuck the Federation, dude. It's like you get in the world and you fuck shit up and there's a bunch of fucking fucks and it's fucking like it doesn't surprise me that he thinks that shit is cool. He was a, he's a super nerd as evidenced by <laughs> Reservoir Dogs. Sure. Do you remember right, that Fantastic right, right. Four? Yeah, yeah, Invisible Bitch and Flame uh, yeah, On and yeah, shit. Yeah. yeah, this guy looks exactly like the fucking thing. That was hilarious. And as a Marvel fan, we eat that shit up. That's yeah. great. Yep. But <coughs> the pitch is apparently R rated. Yes. And uh-huh. he, he so he was in a writer's room with several writers, and I just I feel a little bit betrayed. Okay, let me tell you why. The R-rated thing, I'm like, that's dumb. Uh, whatever idea you have, if it can't be turned into a PG-13 thing, then it, I don't think it's a Star Trek thing. Even Star Trek Discovery, they are saying the F word in the show yeah. occasionally, yeah. but it's on like a streaming premium thing. Right. And I think that's fine. That's not something that like thematically, subject content-wise, it's like, oh, we're talking, oh, we got it. this is rated yeah. R. It's not that. It's still Star Trek. Right. But I remember J.J. Abrams saying, we have an idea for part four. Yes. It has to do with Chris Pine. He play, he's playing George Kirk. Chris he did Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth, sorry, and Chris Pine, who yeah. plays Captain Kirk, <laughs> with his papa Chris Hemsworth, who played George Kirk in 2009's mm-hmm. Star Trek, mm-hmm. and that there was some time travel thing. And they made a little joke, a little cheeky reference, because back in the original Star Trek movie series, the fourth one is Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, mm-hmm. that involves time mm-hmm. travel. So they're like, well, it's the fourth one. we got to do time travel, right, is kind of what they said. Right. Mm-hmm. Cheeky, fun little joke. And I was thinking, oh, I'm sure you guys already have pitches. I'm sure you guys already have like a little treatment of like, here's what the basic idea would be. Yeah. Here's a way we could bring back Chris Hemsworth for a minute but then maybe at the end he'll still sacrifice himself and die and it's a it's a character that's getting over his father issues which th- this new K- Jim Kirk absolutely has daddy issues uh-huh, which I think uh-huh. is great it's cool 
So what the fuck? They're throwing all that out <laughs> just to be like, well, let's hear Tarantino's pitch so he could come in. Hector, and it's shit gonna on take that? place just in one room. <sighs> Like we're not gonna change I, scenes, and if you do, it's just gonna be a peek out of like oh a, a, a hallway, and that's yeah. it. Yeah, and oh it's no. just gonna be a dialogue-driven movie. <laughs> I think. I think. And no. then somebody's gonna get their head cut off by a samurai sword. I think the one thing that <laughs> would potentially intrigue me about this is I still want to see the Hemsworth Pine team up. Movie. Sure, I think it's I want to see George George Kirk and James Kirk James C Kirk go on an adventure together. I want that movie. Whether or not it's going to be J.J., he's doing episode nine now, so I don't think it's going to be him. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they're going to get Justin Lin back because it looks like Justin Lin is going back to the Fast and Furious franchise. I would have I been fine with Justin Lin coming back. Yeah, I so thought he did fine. I don't, I don't know who, who that ends up being, but I feel like in my gut that they're going to create a scenario where they're going to still make that fourth movie. It'll be Chris Hemsworth, Chris Pine, new director, J.J. still producing and all that kind of stuff. Tarantino will come in and tell a story that could parallel that story or could be a next generations type of a story or an alternate universe and it'll be more of a tarantino style star trek if that's the case i'm kind of more okay with it i don't necessarily want tarantino coming in and doing the hemsworth pine star trek which it doesn't sound like he would anyway because it sounds like he pitched them a story Mm -hmm. and if he's pitching them a story right he's not going to want to make this fourth movie he's going to do star trek the Tarantino Star Trek. Yeah. Yeah. And as yes, as R-rated as it'll be and probably violent mm-hmm. and probably mouthy, I'm very very interested to to hear a Tarantino Star Trek movie because yeah. it could be extremely interesting. But also Crazy. Tarantino's dialogue doesn't need a lot of acting either. Like mm-hmm. it's very good. It's it's so yeah. it's very dialogue driven like he can keep us focused with people talking at a table yeah. and like just That opening shot of Inglorious Bastards right, is exactly. incredible. That you know that that see, that famous scene where they're all just talking and playing yeah. cards. It's crazy. Oh, Reservoir Dogs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's just and then Reservoir Dogs only being in one room like this movie isn't going to be if if he's involved in it, I don't think it's going to mesh well if they do that mm-hmm. like them going on this crazy adventure because Tarantino's dialogue like i said doesn't need that action like mm-hmm. big cg effect right. type thing so mm-hmm. i don't know how this is going to happen honestly it's it's strange i'm willing to give it a shot it's just i he must have some idea that, way that out of left field the style of the star trek movie is going to be beyond anything right we'll, exactly we we have seen it's going to be very interesting it's going to be like the 60s show dude just in the hollow deck and people going oh, <laughs> oh. But I do agree. L L underscore run and Christoph Waltz is brilliant. Bring him in. Yeah, of course. Bring Uh, in Christoph Waltz. Youth enthusiasm go. Enthusiasm go. (laughs) Enthusiasm go says Tarantino writes characters usually based on how people in these situations talk and people in the military curse. Star Trek isn't military. And they right. said they, they corrected explorers. the space military. They're not yeah. even space military. It's I know what you're trying to say, but I feel like like Star Trek should be treated as its own unique genre because it kind of is. And there's always the debate of well, is Star Trek military versus exploration? That's kind of like the central conflict for most Star Trek I stories. Don't, yeah. It's like, what are we? We're trying right. to be cool, but yeah. we are like imposing our beliefs on other alien cultures and there's sure. interesting stuff to talk about and it's for me, colonialism. I don't yeah. I don't look at I don't look at the characters in Star Trek or or the or the um what are they called? What, what's it called? The Federation. the Federation. I don't look at them as a military. Yeah. I look at the Federation as being astronauts who are more science based. Yeah. Who have some defensive training. Right. Correct. But they're not. Uh, they're not offensive. They're mostly defensive. Like so if they are under an attack. Yeah. They're going to defend themselves, but they're not necessarily the ones who are going to be the first ones to go in and really like start a war, unless circumstances sort of present themselves yeah. to. I'm just thinking of the whole Star Trek timeline and trying to figure out what could Tarantino be trying to pitch. Mm. If it's not something right, with right, Chris exactly. Pine, Captain Kirk, and Zachary exactly. Quinto Spock, because they're doing part four or whatever, yeah. then I'm like, I don't want him to, I don't think he's going to do a reboot for the next generation, because right. I don't think Tarantino was that guy. He wasn't into that Star Trek, so yeah, his anything is the after OG. that. His is the OG. But then they already are doing that with the new movies. They already are doing 10 years before the OG with Star Trek Discovery, the TV show. Mm-hmm. They, you know, like, does he want to do, like, what? how close to, the, to those original characters does he want to get? The only thing I could think of is that Tarantino came in and was like, you guys need to do a fucking Star Trek, but from the Klingons' perspective, okay? Oh, all right? It's all Klingons. The whole 
cool things in fucking Klingon and like you know and I, I'm like that is interesting and in a way to blow out the universe right, right. without having to be Star Trek is the Enterprise ship or a crew on the Enterprise sure. or some ship and it's mostly humans and it's at some point in this timeline right. without going hundreds of years before because I already did that in the show Enterprise yeah. or hundreds of years after because it'll be too far removed blah blah yeah. blah the only thing I could think is Tarantino doing something like that is being like well what about this alien race and it's just them yeah. is that still considered Star Trek or is Star yeah, Trek? Yeah, I mean, Klingons the, the are synonymous with Star Trek at this point. They are so. Yeah. Which, if you throw in, if you throw in the idea of a rated R, it's really just gonna be violent. Which is which <laughs> is fine. I'd like fine. Because if, fine. if it's if, and if, if any if any group hope of characters there's a Klingon gimp in there somewhere, the, they have deserved that. It's Klingons because sure. they are like a the Klingon Empire is a very yeah. violent people and they're very yeah. like war based and they're. And you if know. there's any cursing, what do you do with the subtitles? <laughs> you just don't show it. How? How do they yeah. curse? That's how it would be. That's all it would be, you know, which is fine. Is that what the movie's going to be called? Yeah, it would be Star Trek. And Klingon. <laughs> Star Trek. <laughs> which is just their food they eat. I don't know. Yeah. So, and it's like, if he's coming in with something like that, it's like, fuck, dude, you're bouncing off the wall. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's odd. If, people it's odd. Aren't, uh, if already they're not going to go see super good looking people in the J.J. Abrams movie right, verse. right. I don't think the Klingon movie is going to be no. like a big draw. <laughs> Even if you get Christoph Waltz is the main Klingon in Star Trek Klingons. <laughs> Forehead. Like, yeah. I don't know. I I think <laughs> that financially, I have no idea box office wise yeah, how this, this movie odd. would do. This is odd. But I think that people are going to be very very interested in this. Sure, I okay. am. I mean, I'm extremely intrigued to 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 go to the theater and see a trailer for Quentin Tarantino's Star Trek. Like I'm just thinking about it right now with the way he cuts his trailers. I, I can't. And obviously, I because can't. it's a Paramount movie, it's going to be very studio driven. But I can't. I'm very intrigued. Yeah. yeah. Very intrigued. That's gonna All be right. super interesting. I didn't ex- I never expected <laughs> Kill Bill and I loved it. Sure. So sure. I'm going to watch but it. But that's very Tarantino. That. Well, yeah. You know, because mm-hmm. that's his original idea. But be like Right. I mean, if but last year someone would have been like, Hey, Tarantino's gonna do Star Trek movie, like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> I don't I don't know, man. I, I, I this is out of left field. Twenty nineteen. Yeah. We'll see. Star Trek. Trill Bill. Trill Bill. Trill Trill is an alien in Star Trek. Oh, very (laughs) nice. Guys, that's going to wrap it up for our show tonight. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Make sure if you're on YouTube, you're subscribing, youtube.com slash hyperrpg. If you're here, check out all the other shows we're doing here on Twitch, twitch.tv slash hyperrpg, Power Rangers Hyperforce. Hydra's giving me on pencils and parsecs. If you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be tonight, 9 p.m. Fridays, every Friday. And uh, if you're on the podcast, thank you so much for listening. Appreciate all you guys' oh, listens. Yeah. Make yeah. sure you guys are subscribing, you. whether it's Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, and or SoundCloud. Hector, where can everybody find you? you can find me on the internet at Hector is Funny. Augustine, I hope that you go home and you take like a hot shower and kind of clear yourself you, up. Yeah, better, it's man. too much Maybe smoke. spit a black loogie out. L underscore uh, inhale too much smoke <laughs> this week uh, <laughs> dot com. Uh, L underscore is <laughs> not the taco. Uh, and you just find me at Adam Havoc, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next week. Bye.